Um, it's lovely to see everybody this morning. Yeah, down to touch, I think, it's a bit echoey. Um, I enjoy taking that off. Hopefully, it's not many weeks till everyone will be allowed um, to take them off. Obviously, with a bit of care and attention, we'll keep an eye on what the government will say as we move forwards. Okay, just to read one verse before we start. It's from Isaiah 53, and it says this. Yet it was the Lord's will to crush him and cause him to suffer. And though the Lord makes his life an offering for sin, he will see his offspring and prolong his days, and the will of the Lord will prosper in his hand. It is a communion service. We're going to centre our thoughts on our Lord Jesus and what he's done for us at the cross this morning. And we're going to start by singing a hymn that we've sung many times. It was certainly one of John's favourites. And we're going to start by singing Power of the Cross. We're not singing that, are we? That was a mistake, wasn't it? <laughs> Listening to the Power of the Cross.
anything anyone particularly wants me to mention? And I know you'll remember if I don't remind you on the video and it'll be on YouTube. Um, is there anything anyone wants to mention? Tuesday, 
Um, obviously we were restricted because of Covid, but Jill did want the service recording, as we do on a Sunday. We're not putting it on YouTube, um, but Jeff has made some DVDs. He's brought eight with him this morning, so if you weren't able to come and you want to see the service, it'll be like watching the church service. So Jeff does a really good professional job with that, but they're there just outside of the table. So if you weren't able to come with the restrictions and you'd like to take a, a DVD to have a watch, please feel free to do that. And of course we will still have the plan of arranging a memorial Thanksgiving service when there's less restrictions. Um, exactly when that will be we're, we're, with summer holidays and the rest of it, we don't know yet, but we'll let you know as soon as we know. Okay, yeah, thanks Jeff. Right, I'm going to do quite a lot of reading this morning. My intention is not to say too much, so hopefully you can hold me to that later whether I do. Because I want to play some songs and I want God's Word to speak. As we've been coming towards the end of my time going through the Psalms, I'm, I've got one more Psalm left I'm going to do. I'm going to do Psalm 23. But as communion this week, I wanted to come to Psalm 22. And we've been thinking in the last Psalms about our relationship with God, about knowing God, about our intimacy with God. So what's this psalm got to do with that as I read it through to you? What it's got to do with it is the cost that our Father, our God, that the Lord Jesus went through so that we could know him, so that we could be brought back into his family, so that we could have that relationship with him. So this morning is all about the cost that God paid, that our Lord Jesus paid, so that we could have that relationship to know him. It's Psalm 22, the title is to the chief musician. We don't know what the tune was like, but it's said to the tune, the deer of the dawn, and it is a psalm of David. It's quite long, but I want to take the time to read it through, even if I'm not going to talk about the whole psalm. You'll be familiar with the start. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Why are you so far from helping me and from the words of my groaning? O oh my God, I cry in the daytime, but you do not hear. And in the night season, and I am not silent, but you are holy, enthroned in the praises of Israel. Our fathers trusted in you, they trusted, and you delivered them. They cried to you and were delivered. They trusted in you and were not ashamed. But I am a worm and no man, a reproach of men, and despised by the people. All those who see me ridicule me, they shoot out the lip, they shake the head, saying, He trusted in the Lord, let him rescue him. Let him deliver him, since he delights in him. But you are he who took me out of the womb. You made me trust while on my mother's breaths. I was cast upon you from birth. From my mother's womb you have been my God. Be not far from me, for trouble is near, for there is none to help. Many bulls have surrounded me, strong bulls of Bashan have encircled me. They gape at me with their mouths like a raging and roaring lion. I am poured out like water, and all my bones are out of joint. My heart is like wax, it has melted within me. My strength is dried up like a pot's head, and my tongue clings to my jaws. You have brought me to the dust of death. For dogs have surrounded me, the congregation of the wicked has enclosed me. They pierced my hands and my feet. I can count all my bones. They look and stare at me. They divide my garments among them, and for my clothing they cast lots. But you, O oh Lord, do not be far from me. O oh, my strength, hasten to help me. Deliver me from the sword, my precious life from the power of the dog. Save me from the lion's mouth and from the horns of wild oxen. You have answered me. I will declare your name to my brethren. In the midst of the assembly, I will praise you. You who fear the Lord, praise him. All you descendants of Jacob, glorify him, and fear him, all your offspring of Israel. For he has not despised, nor abhorred, the affliction of the afflicted, 
nor has he hidden his face from him. But when he cried to him, he heard. My praise shall be of you in the great assembly. I will pay my vows before those who fear him. The poor shall eat and be satisfied. Those who seek him will praise the Lord. Let your heart live forever. All the ends of the world shall remember and turn to the Lord. And all the families of the nation shall worship before you. For the kingdom is the Lord's and he rules over the nations. All the prosperous of the earth shall eat and worship. All those who go down to the dust shall bow before him, even he who cannot keep himself alive. A posterity shall serve him. It will be recounted of the Lord to the next generation. They will come and declare his righteousness to a people who will be born, that he has done this. So my intention is not to teach from that or expound it, but it's worth reading through. Maybe at home you'll go back and read it and reflect on it. It's so full of the emotion of what our Lord went through, but it's not just that. There is so much in that psalm. We know it's a psalm that was written by David, that's clear. We don't know when David felt in his own life this suffering and rejection to write those words. But we do know David was moved by the Spirit in a prophetic sense. It's what we call a messianic psalm. It's about Jesus as much, if not more so, than about David. And it's astonishing, isn't it, that David lived around a thousand years before Jesus. And here we've read a psalm that if you know anything about what Jesus went through on the cross, that's pointed so clearly to that sacrifice, to that suffering, to that rejection. And it's one of these psalms that has one of these pivot points in it. I mentioned that a few times. That bit at the end of the New King James is slightly different in the NIV, where it says that you have answered me. All the rejection, all the suffering, it then starts to look forward more positively into praise and worship and into the future resurrection and glory when the kingdoms come and give their honour to Jesus. As I said, I want to use it just to lead us in communion, really. The cross. There are so many things about our faith that matter. We celebrate the incarnation and the Lord Jesus' birth at Christmas. We think about the perfect life of our Saviour. All the miracles and wonderful things he taught and did. But the centre point of everything is the cross. That was God's plan. That was God's love to us that he will send his son. And the cross and the resurrection beyond is everything of our faith. So I hope you don't mind me reading it again. We're not going to read Psalm 22, but we're going to read something very similar. And notice there are lots of references of that emotion and anguish our Lord went through that's described we get the veil taken away a little bit in Psalm to see more of that suffering when he was made sin and forsaken. But it points so closely to Jesus on the cross. It's mainly Matthew 27. I've slipped in a few words from Mark 15, Luke 23 and John 19 to give the whole picture. But I just want to read it. So this is after the betrayal, after the trial. And it says... Now as they came out, they found a man of Cyrene, Simon by name. Him they compelled to bear his cross. And when they had come to a place called Golgotha, that is to say, place of a skull, they gave him sour wine mingled with gall to drink. But when he had tasted it, he would not drink. Then they crucified him. Then the soldiers, when they had crucified Jesus, took his garments and made four parts to each soldier a part, and also the tunic. Now the tunic was without seam woven from the top in one piece. They said therefore among themselves, let's not tear it, but cast lots for it, whose it shall be, that the scripture might be fulfilled, which says, they divided my garments among them, and for my clothing they cast lots. Therefore the soldiers did these things. Sitting down, they kept watch over him there, and they put up over his head the accusation written against him. This is Jesus, the King of the Jews. 
Their two robbers were crucified with him, one on the right hand and another on the left. So the scripture was fulfilled which says, he was numbered with the transgressors. Then Jesus said, Father forgive them, for they do not know what they do. And those who passed by blasphemed him, wagging their heads and saying, You have destroyed the temple and build it in three days. Save yourself. If you're the Son of God, come down from the cross. Likewise the chief priests also, mocking with the scribes and elders, said, He saved others. Himself he can't save. If he is the King of Israel, let him come down from the cross and we'll believe him. He trusted in God. Let him deliver him now if you're happy. For he said, I am the Son of God. Even the robbers who were crucified with him reviled him with the same thing. Now from the sixth hour until the ninth hour, there was darkness over all the land. And about the ninth hour, Jesus cried out with a loud voice saying, Eli, Eli, lama sabachthani. That is, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Some of those stood there when they heard that said, This man is calling for Elijah. After this, Jesus, knowing that all things were now accomplished, that the scripture might be fulfilled, said, I thirst. Now a vessel full of sour wine was sitting there, and they filled a sponge with sour wine and put it on his up. They put it to his mouth. The rest said, Let alone, let us see if Elijah will come and save him. So when Jesus had received the sour wine, he cried out with a loud voice, It is finished. He said, Father, into your hands I commit my spirit. Having said this, he breathed his last. Then behold, the veil of the temple was torn in two from top to bottom, and the earth quaked, and the rocks were split, and the graves were opened, and many bodies of the saints who had fallen asleep were raised, and coming out of the graves after his resurrection, they went into the holy city and appeared to men. So when the centurion and those with him who were guarding Jesus saw the earthquake and the things that had happened, they feared greatly, saying, Truly this was the Son of God. What can we say to add to that? Hopefully, as we lead into our communion time, we will be able to focus our hearts, our minds, on what Jesus went through for us. On the unveiling of it we've read in the psalm, and the actuality of it we've read from the Gospels. You see, it's there at the cross that God's love for me and for you was displayed. A love which there is no comparison to it. What greater love is there than the love of the Father to give his Son, his only Son, of Jesus to willingly come and be our sacrifice. This is a great verse from Romans 5. It says that when we were utterly helpless, Christ came at just the right time and died for us sinners. Now most people would not be willing to die for an upright person. Though someone might perhaps be willing to die for a person who is especially good. But God showed or displayed his great love for us by sending Christ to die for us while we were still sinners. We didn't deserve this love, did we? We didn't deserve the sacrifice of Jesus so that we could be forgiven. We turned our backs on him. Yet God in his great love for us sent his son. This is how we know what love is. 1 John 3.16 says, Because he laid down his life for us. There's so much we can say about the cross, that we can sing about the cross. But today I want us to contemplate, firstly, that this is God's love displayed. And to see the anguish of those hours of darkness where the Holy Spirit, our loving Father, Jesus God the Son, 
always together in unity, for the only time ever, there was a split. Jesus cries, my God, my God, why? But then afterwards, as the answer comes, he says, if my Father into your hands. Jesus was forsaken for us. 1 Peter puts it like this. It says, Christ himself suffered for sins once. He was not guilty, but he suffered for those who are guilty to bring you to God. His body was killed, but he was made alive in the spirit. Jesus suffered as the guilty one. In those hours of darkness where God made him the sinless one sin for us, he suffered, suffered for my shame, my guilt, my pride, my lust, my anger, my lies, my jealousy, my deceit, my unkindness, my hate, whatever word you want to put in, it was my sin he took and yours. Such is his love. And for all who now come to him, we are made right. So as we go into our communion, I want we mention God's love. I don't want to leave us just with God's love. I want to mention God's power. We sang in the first one, it's interesting that the Stuart Town End getting him is called the power of the cross. I might have called it the love of the cross. They called it the power of the cross. Because it's the power of the cross and the sacrifice that the sinless sacrifice of Christ that brings us to forgiveness, to stand before him, righteous in Christ and justified. These are all little quotes from Psalm 22. So we're not going to expand the psalm. But when you go and read it, look at those things. There's the pivot. It's about the suffering and rejection of Christ, but it's looking forward to his future glory. Christ suffered these things and will enter into his glory. So we don't only see God's love for us that we love and celebrate, but we see his power demonstrated because Jesus has conquered death. Death is not the last word. And how important that has been to us over this week, over this year, over the years before. As we have the hope that our loved ones, death is not the last word. Because Jesus is raised, we will be raised. Because he is alive, we will be made alive. This is how Peter puts it in Acts 2. He says, fellow Israelites, listen to this. Jesus of Nazareth, a man accredited by God to you by miracles, wonders and signs, which God did among you through him, as you yourselves know, this man was handed over to you by God's deliberate plan. Note that, not an accident, not a miscarriage of justice, although it was. God's deliberate plan and foreknowledge and you with the help of wicked men put him to death by nailing him to the cross but God raised him from the dead freeing him from the agony of death because it was impossible for death to keep its hold on him impossible and we stand this side of the cross and the resurrection we see God's love displayed we see his power demonstrated so I've not said a lot, that's all I really want to say, but as we move into communion, we've got a song to listen to first, let's think about God's love displayed for us, let's think about his power demonstrated, and as we think about the agonising cry of Jesus on the cross foretold by David, let's remember, we will not be forsaken because Jesus, Jesus was. God is never going to leave us. The cost of our relationship, the cost of our salvation was the forsaking of our Lord. I've got a lovely, lovely song to listen to. Um, it's When I Survey the Wondrous Cross. It's to a tune that I think Jeff has played for us before. I found this version and I just love it. So hopefully you do. I like bands, I like orchestras, I like music, but when it's done right, there's nothing more beautiful than this is basically the human voice together. It's a hint what it's going to be with a thousand tongues in heaven. This is when I survived the Mudra Scrot.
says in 1 Corinthians 10, the cup of blessing in which we bless, is it not the communion of the blood of Christ? The bread which we break, is it not the communion of the body of Christ? For we, though many, are one bread and one body, for we all partake of that one bread. Let's pray. Lord Jesus, we've had the, the short time to contemplate what you did for us at the cross. The agony that you faced before in the garden. Blood sweat on your brow. Tears of crying. Yet not my will, but yours be done. And we trace to the cross and pierce your hands and feet. Bones out of joint, but not a bone broken. Oh Jesus, when you were made sin, the wrath of the holy and righteous one who is enthroned in the heavens, pouring out the wrath against our sin on you. You have taken the punishment that we deserve. You have taken our place and died in our place. Greater love has no one than this. Lord Jesus, you didn't just lay down your life for your friends. You laid it down while we were yet sinners and were enemies of the cross and enemies of God. Lord Jesus was ever such displayed as this. Sorrow and love flow mingled down. Lord Jesus, help us now just to contemplate, to come with thanksgiving in our hearts, to come with worship that you deserve. You are the Holy One who died for us, the One who has made us righteous, your righteousness. The One who cried, it is finished. No more sacrifice for sin. Death and sin defeated forever. And we enjoy this victory not because of anything of ourselves, but all because of your grace and love to us. So help us now to remember you, we ask, for your own glory in Jesus' name. Amen. wonder again at the price that you paid, the precious blood that you shed. You see the soldier after you have given up your spirit, pierce your side, the blood and water flowing out. And we are cleansed and we are forgiven. And we join with his exclamation at those events. Truly, Lord Jesus, you are the Son of God. And today you are the victorious and risen one, the one who is coming back 
the one who will reign forever and forever. Lord Jesus, prepare a place for us, longing that you will be able to show us your glory, the glory you had with your Father before even the worlds were made. Lord Jesus, what a prospect. What a great salvation you brought us into. Your love, your power displayed and demonstrated for us. Thank you that you're ever with us. And we thank you that no more sacrifice is required. No more split in the Godhead will ever happen. Sin is dealt with. It is done. It is finished. Help us to honour you now. Worship you, Lord Jesus, and remember you in our hearts and in our minds and in our souls. Bless us, we pray, as we do this. In Jesus' name. Amen. Jesus, again, we thank you for your goodness to us. Pray that you will bless us as we go on our way. Pray that we will remember all that you have done for us. And that we will sing the praise and the worship that we deserve. Of those in difficult times, we ask that you will draw near to them. In Jesus' name. Amen. It says in Revelation 1, To him who loves us and has freed us from our sins, by his blood, and made us a kingdom, priest to his God and Father, to him be glory and dominion for ever and ever. Amen. I'm going to play us out with a song called All I Have is Christ. The amount of Sundays I've nearly played this song and then it hasn't made the final list. You remember when we did Psalm 73 that Asaph said, that there was none in heaven that we desired before him. Jesus is above all. He is above everything and above everyone. And this is where I want to conclude that time in the Psalms about our relationship and knowing him. Jesus is all and everything. But it's appropriate for today because the second verse of this song says, And I beheld God's love displayed. You suffered in our place. You bore the wrath deserved for me. Now all I know is grace. Just to play us out, all I have is Christ.
grave I had no hope That you would own A rebel to Your own will And if you had Not loved me first I would refuse Hallelujah All I have is Christ Hallelujah Jesus is my to the cause you looked upon my helpless state and led me to the cross and I beheld God's love display you suffered in my from me now all I know is grace hallelujah all I have is Christ hallelujah Jesus
Risen Sun. Oh.